A decade ago, a nonprofit organization called Foragen was making the rounds in the media, touting their mission to make circumcised men whole again by regrowing their foreskins using the latest technology in regenerative medicine. Over the past 10 years, they have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in public donations and grants to help achieve their goal. Where has the money gone, and how much progress have they really made? Let's talk about that, shall we? I'd first like to say that I will only briefly touch on the controversial topic of circumcision in this video. That's not what this video is about, but I will have to address the issue as Forgen functions as an advocacy group as well as a research organization. Before we discuss the merits and finances of the nonprofit, I wish to begin by addressing its goal. That is, to use regenerative medicine to restore the human foreskin in circumcised adults. Is that even possible? What is regenerative medicine, and is the technology advanced enough to tackle such a monumentous task? Well, I googled it, and it's a rapidly advancing discipline in medical science. Regenerative medicine is an area of medical research that explores the process of replacing, engineering, or regenerating human animal cells or tissues or organs in order to restore normal function. This branch of medicine is quite young, only about 20 years old, but it already has an impressive resume under its belt. Since the early 2000s, pioneers in the field have been restoring a wide selection of relatively simple organs like tracheas and bladders through a process of decellularization and transplantation. This process works by harvesting stem cells from a patient and using those stem cells to grow a new organ. They strip a donor organ of living cells and use that scaffolding to grow a new organ for the patient, which when transplanted is much less likely to be rejected by the body. Now this process is revolutionary, but it's rather expensive and only works on simple organs and the human foreskin is relatively complex, at least when compared to a bladder or a trachea. Currently, all new organs have to come from a decellularized donor organ. However, future technologies like 3D printing may eliminate this need. As far as advances in the field of regenerating sexual organs, in September of last year, a team of scientists successfully decellularized a human penis, but just the core tissues, not the foreskin. But that's a huge achievement and proves promising for other areas of regenerative medicine. All in all, regrowing organs, including the human foreskin, seems entirely possible, although it seems like this technology will only be available to the general public in the distant future. Now, where is Foragen in all of this? Have they made a meaningful contribution to the field of sexual regenerative medicine? And how much have your generous donations helped them achieve their goals? Well, because they are a nonprofit, their tax returns are publicly available for all to see. So I dug through their dirty laundry to see where their money is really going. In my hand right now are their 2018 tax returns filed by a Bostonian by the name of Erica Klopper, who seems to be a volunteer dedicated to the cause. There seems to be some pretty interesting stuff in the expenses box. While the president and vice president of the organization are not actually receiving any compensation for their work, they do seem to be running a pretty high overhead overall. Of the $127,984 they collected in the tax year of 2018, $74,000 of that money was actually spent. The majority of that money, $48,000 worth, is in travel and meeting expenses. I assume that's from travel between their American headquarters and Italian headquarters. Now, I can understand that, but I'm gonna nitpick a little bit here. There's some pretty interesting expenses. For instance, they somehow managed to spend $2,719 on podcasting. That's a lot of money. So where did the other $51,000 go that wasn't spent on computer equipment, facility fees, and other stuff? Are they spending that on research or advertising or something? Well, no. The rest of their money went straight into their bank account, and it seems like their net reserves have been growing steadily over time. Now, I don't pretend to be an expert in nonprofits, finances, and taxes and such, but I just don't understand why they need so much reserves if they're receiving such a steady and generous amount of income. Couldn't they be spending that money on more research? I'm sure that there are very good reasons for them to do this, and it's not like they're keeping it secret but they aren't very upfront about their percentages either. Unlike an organization like the ASPCA, which has an entire page of their website devoted to it, they don't have a section of their website breaking down their expenditures and cost breakdown and such, which 
It's a little worrying. Even more worrying is that they have been expressing their desires to go for profit for a while now. But don't worry, they say it's just to hop over some regulatory hurdles to increase the pace of progress a little bit. But going for profit would remove this element of transparency and accountability. And with that gone, you could still give them donations, but you would have no idea where the money was really going. This makes me worried that the organization is selling people far-fetched promises of clinical trials only to go for a profit and to take that half a million dollar sum with them and vanish into thin air. That's just a worry of mine. It's probably unfounded. It doesn't seem like these people are in it for the money. And how about the money they are spending? What have they done with it? Well, as far as advancing the field of regenerative medicine, they've earned a lot of respect points from me. They have funded the research and publication of papers in peer-reviewed journals. They've worked with respected Italian universities and have actually successfully decellularized human foreskin tissue. This is some pretty groundbreaking work and it's funded directly by people's donations. And that is the good news. Um, there is some bad news. I have some ethical questions about their advertising strategies, that is, how they're getting people to donate. And this is where we get to the touchy topic of circumcision itself. If you don't know what circumcision is, it is the surgical removal of the foreskin from the human penis. The procedure is especially controversial because it is done on infants, which raises ethical concerns about consent or whether its benefits outweigh its very unlikely but very real risks. Besides those serious concerns, is being circumcised really that bad? The argument against it is that it removes sensitive tissue from the penis and therefore reduces overall sexual satisfaction and pleasure, but there isn't that much evidence to actually support that claim besides anecdotes and speculation. Absolutely, the foreskin is an important part of the penis, and it definitely changes the way one experiences sex. But massive surveys of men circumcised later in life, and even more massive meta-studies of those surveys, have found no conclusive evidence that circumcision has any large or meaningful impact on sexual satisfaction or pleasure. But Foragen doesn't want you to know that. They want your financial support, and they will stop at nothing to get it. Just read the first sentence on the homepage of their website. Foragen's goal is to heal the physical detriment that is inherent to circumcision, including the functional and sensory losses to the penis when circumcised, as well as the potential for psychological damage for those on whom the surgery was performed. Their campaign is manipulative. It's filled with emotionally charged language designed to tear at the heartstrings of men who already feel sexually inadequate. It's kind of disgusting, to be honest with you. It seems like they're selling something more nebulous than just a regenerative procedure. Like they're promising not to restore a physical part of the body, but a psychological hole in someone's life. Considering there's plenty of healthy, happy, and fulfilled circumcised people out there, I'm concerned that those seeking these treatments that Foragen is promising might have a lot more going on in their life than just having a surgically altered penis. Foragen seems to be selling a cure for something that really doesn't have anything to do with the functionality of the penis. They seem to be preying on people who are vulnerable and need actual serious mental health now and not far-fetched promises of surgeries and procedures in the future. So I'd like to conclude with this. If you are in a good mental state and might have some concerns about um, your circumcised penis and your sex life, and you have a lot of money to burn, then Foragen seems to be the only organization making a conscious effort to put research into reversing the effects of circumcision. However, I am extremely concerned about the practices of the organization. Not so much as financial practices, although there may be concern if they go for profit. I'm concerned about the use of manipulation tactics to gain funding. What they're doing is rather unethical, and they need to seriously rethink their advertising strategy so they don't cause psychological damage to the people they're allegedly trying to help. Anyways, I'm Robert Tolpe. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and maybe subscribe because I worked pretty hard on it as always. And goodbye for now.